Alright lads, welcome to my review of the USS Moffat. This is one of the larger destroyers built for the US Navy I believe, either just before World War II or slightly into it. In game, these ships are known for their firepower as well as great grinding potential, but in real life, they were a little bit hit and miss. The source of the strength in game and the negative aspects in real life are both the same things, mainly the guns. Having four large turrets as you can see on the USS Moffat adds a lot of weight high up in the ship making it rather unstable. This layout of guns led to many of the early American destroyers getting lost at sea and generally being dangerously unstable. However, in game, it gives them amazing firepower, especially for their battle rating. But let's cover the game more. The USS Moffat is a rank 3 battle rating 5.0 destroyer in the American tech tree. You can pick this ship up for the very low cost of 1,300 Golden Eagles and to put it in your lineup, it'll only cost you 10,000 Silver Lions. This low purchase price has led to the ship being spammed out quite a lot. Well, the low cost and the great Silver Lion modifiers. I believe in realistic battles, this has a Silver Lion modifier of 1200. That's right, 1200%. This means if you get a good game in this ship, you can easily rake in over 200,000 Silver Lions. Theoretically, giving this ship the best Silver Lion grinding potential in the game, at least as far as I'm aware. But because this ship is so popular now, pretty much all the games you'll fight will be against other USS Moffats, kind of evening the playing field. So is this ship still even worth it? That's what we're going to try and cover today. Well lads, let's jump straight into it. But first, the armor and survivability. And first things first, let's talk about the crew interchange ability skill. This is basically the health bar of the ship. With a stock crew, you can lose 113 sailors before the ship is knocked out. And with an ace crew, that rises to 136. Bear in mind, your crew complement is 194, so you do have quite a large amount of health pool for the battle rating. This allows you to soak up some damage and stay in the fight for much longer than another destroyer. And your survivability is further improved by the addition of anti-fragmentation armor. If we take a quick look at this image, you can see that you have quite a lot of anti-frag armor along the main belt of the ship, as long as covering all the turrets. To put it simply, this anti-fragmentation armor reduces the spawning when this armor is hit by high explosive or any other type of round. This basically minimizes the internal damage that this ship will suffer, giving it a huge benefit compared to pretty much all of the other nation's destroyers. Compared to a British destroyer, which has no armor whatsoever, the US destroyers are much more survivable. While incoming rounds will still penetrate the armor of the Moffat, the post-penetration damage will be greatly reduced. But let's take a little bit more of a closer look at this armor. Along the main belt, we have 12.7mm of armor protection. Again, this isn't going to stop any incoming rounds whatsoever, but it does give you additional protection for your pumps and engines. And then around the guns, the main turret is protected by 3.175mm of armor. Again, this is absolutely nothing. Any incoming round to your turret will knock out the gun, as well as the gun house. So while the USS Moffat certainly does spit a lot of fire at its enemies, it certainly cannot take fire in return. But let's move on to the guns. I'll give you a general overview, then we'll cover each gun individually. So to start, the ship is armed with 8 torpedoes. These are the Mark 15s, and you're probably never going to use them really. We then also have 4 turrets, each containing two 5-inch L-38 guns. These were great multi-purpose guns used by the US Navy, right up until after World War II. They were just let down a bit by their short barrel. This limited their effectiveness in ship versus ship combat, but made them great for the anti-air role, as they had a very high fire rate, as well as gun elevation and turret traverse rates. We then also have two 1.1 inch L-75 guns. These are the iconic Chicago typewriters. They're pretty much useless in game, and the US Navy themselves dropped them, I think, in early 1943 or late 1942. The 20mm Orlikon was much better. And we also have five of these 20mm Orlikons. These are the L70 variants. While great for knocking out planes when they're in their dive above you, the 20mm, as you can imagine, are rather range limited. But starting with the 1.1 inches, these two guns have a combined ammunition count of 1,950 rounds. They've got pretty good vertical guidance characteristics with 15 degrees of gun depression and 89 degrees of gun elevation. While your AI gunners can put these guns to pretty good use, especially against aircraft, this gun system is a little bit outdated and they were soon replaced by the 20mm Arlacon. You have 7 of these guns, each with 1,800 rounds of ammunition. They've got pretty good vertical guidance characteristics with 10 degrees of gun depression and 65 degrees of gun elevation. Again, 
Good for targeting airplanes, but not really too good at fending off enemy coastal vessels. The weight of shot just isn't high enough to penetrate even the lightest armour. So the 20mm gun and the 1.1 inch gun aren't particularly good when it comes to surface to surface engagements. But moving on to the two main weapons, and we'll start with the 533mm steam turbine Mark 15 torpedoes. You'll have two launches of these each containing four torpedoes. If you untick the torpedo mode in the modifications section, the torpedoes will have a maximum speed of 83 km per hour. However, this does reduce their range down to 5.5 km. But due to the small maps that typically are found in the destroyer battle ratings, I haven't found this to be an issue. I personally have the depth set to 4 meters, just in case you do get up to it, and it still works against enemy cruisers and destroyers. They have 224 kilos of TNT, making them about average, they're nowhere near as good as the Japanese torpedoes, but what do you expect? If you know anything about American torpedoes during World War II, then the bastard things barely worked. But moving on to our main weaponry, the 5 inch 38 Mark 12 guns. These were made famous during the Pacific campaign of World War II, being the secondary weapons of pretty much all the battleships, cruisers and destroyers in the American World War II fleet. Obviously with the destroyers, they were the primary armament. Anyway, each turret contains 360 rounds of ammunition for each gun. They have a ready rack of 40 rounds and they have a fire rate of 15 rounds per minute. However, those rounds in your ready rack boost your fire rate up to 22 rounds per minute, allowing you to fire pretty much every 3 seconds, giving you a huge DPM advantage compared to other destroyers in game. The guns have pretty good vertical guidance characteristics as you'd expect, with 10 degrees of gun depression and 35 degrees of gun elevation. If you're a big World War II buff, you might notice that these twin turret designs fell out of favour very quick with the US Navy. Replaced by the single turret design found on ships such as USS Fletcher, the smaller single gun turret gave this gun a much higher gun elevation, allowing it to engage high flying planes. It just wasn't possible to do that with the twin turret design, and that's basically why the twin turret design fell out of favour with the Americans. Anyway, what about the ammunition? Well this is a premium, so you don't really have a stock round, as all rounds come unlocked. Anyway, your first round is a 5 inch high explosive. It travels at 792 meters per second and contains 3.2 kilos of TNT, giving it 36 millimeters of penetration. Remember, this is a nose to fuse high explosive, so it will detonate instantly upon impact. If you want a high explosive round that actually penetrates a ship, then you're going to have to turn to semi armor piercing rounds, of which you have two. The first is the Mark 32. This travels at 792 meters per second and contains 1.15 kilos of TNT, and at a range of 1000 meters, it can penetrate 124 millimeters of armor. We also have the upgraded Mark 46 shell. This has the same muzzle velocity, but actually contains less high explosive filler, with only 906 grams. As a result though, the penetration increases up to 150 millimeters at a range of 1000 meters. The Mark 32 and the Mark 46 is pretty much a trade-off between higher damage or higher penetration. Because of the low battery rating of 5.0, I tend to stick with the Mark 32, the first SAP shell. But we have one more shell unlockable for us, and that is a 5 inch high explosive variable time shell. Basically, a proximity fused warhead. Again, it travels at 792 meters per second and contains 3.22 kilos of TNT. It's basically just your stock high explosive round with a proximity fuse in the nose. As a result, you have the same 36 millimeters of penetration. However, these are designed to be used against incoming aircraft, but they are still incredibly potent against enemy destroyers. The proximity fuse warhead is only activated by flying planes, so against normal ships, such as enemy destroyers or cruisers, it acts basically like your stock high explosive round. Because of this, the high explosive variable time shell is my default round. It can be used against both enemy ships and enemy aircraft, dealing massive damage to both of these. I also carry some of the semi armor piercing rounds, if I get up to it, a meter cruiser. So lads, is it worth buying this premium? Well, it's a no brainer. If you like naval gameplay in War Thunder, then the USS Moffat is probably one of the best grinders in the American tech tree, and one of the best silver line printers in the entire game. And for the low price of 1,300 Golden Eagles, it's an absolute bargain. I don't really have any much more to say, it's pretty cut and dried really. If you like ships, buy it, you will never go wrong with it, it's a great investment. I always have fun playing it, it's not as powerful now as it used to be, but it's still damn powerful. Anyway, if you like the review, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. And if you really liked it, consider becoming a channel member. Like Tomato Soured, Doboa LX, Just Someone, Destroyer1805, 
Dr. Bob, Tans, William Tessier, and Lola Alfonso. Thank you very much for becoming members, lads, and I'll see you in the next review.